Hi, so as we start chapter two, historical counting systems, we can talk about a little bit about how numbers were developed and the development of, of just like the digits themselves. And so it took a really long time because, you know, we didn't have Google back, back hundreds and hundreds of years. And in order to develop their own counting because back then we didn't have sophisticated pencils and pens and calligraphy. They used stones, they used knots, um, they even used some sort of like board with stones in it and the higher the stone was the multiplying, how high, so if you were three levels um, stacked, that means you are multiplying by three. And I encourage you to read the textbook because they have a whole like 10 pages of how it all began and it developed and it wasn't actually till the 16th century where the Hindu Arabic numeration system was adopted worldwide because by then we had ships so we were able to visit countries it took a long time to conversate and see what the Mayans were doing versus the Italians versus the Europeans in in the United Kingdom so we wanted to see you know that's why it all looked different all around the world in the early numer num numeration systems but eventually we adopted the Hindu Arabic system which gives us our digits that we have today and so um, that would be the 0 1 2 3 and all the way to 10 right <clears throat> Now, some of you are saying, oh, well, what about 10, 11? No, if you look, if you think about your phone and your phone pad, what digits are there? Or the calculator, um, you'll see the digits are from zero to nine. And then because we have zero to nine, these digits here, we can make 10, right? We can take the one and the zero. We can make 20 with two and zero. We can make 47 by taking the digit four and seven and creating a place value system, right? And that's why we have our place value, which is the ones, the tens, the hundreds, right? So it all started with these, you know, archaic ways of counting because initially we have counting in us right it's it's um we know what more looks like and less than looks like when my sons were very little you know and i they wanted candy or cookies and i had three cookies here and one cookie here they automatically the small children n knew they wanted the m cookies that had three in the pile because there was more cookies. So we automatically are born with like this intuition for numbers. And so we never want to take that away. Like we were born to really do math and this way of counting. And we're going to look at counting in a very unique way. And so we're going to just start with basic counting um representation which is the tally system but we're going to actually learn a lot of different counting systems in this chapter so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing we want to know is what a counting system is right so a counting system is just a system for writing numbers right and and it's just a mathematical notation we can use digits or other symbols. So for example uh, I always put in the tally system because the tally is really a not a number but a symbol in which we represent numbers to count right one tally mark is marked by one you know one line but groups of five are marked differently right so when we use a tally system we have four lines and then the fifth line is a slash through it it's not a it's not a vertical line it's actually a diagonal line so if we count, we can, this is how fast counting can be with tallies because we know every slash that we see is a group of five. So we can go ahead and just count five, 10, five, 10, 15, and then start adding this, the other lines. So five, 10, 15, 16, 17. So this represents the number 17. 
So in the next example, if there are 12 iListen Music MP3 players in a box in Music Max's garage, use tally marks to represent the number of MP3 players. So 12 would be two groups of five, so four, I call them sticks, or four lines and a slash, one, two, three, four, and a slash, and then two left over. Okay, so that's, that's uh, the tally system.